We can sing some cadence along the way. No, shut up! I hate cadence! Yeah, I, I really, I really hate cadence. Left, right, low, right. Oh my god, shut up. Left, and right, okay, and low, I will right. Admit, shut up! I will admit that the Marines have a better cadence system in that they only do cadence when they're, like, running for, like, PT. You think so? They don't do, they don't do, like, other dumb cadences while you're just marching to places. That depends on where you go. The army does cadence all the time. <laughs> all of the time. Anytime you march somewhere, you're doing cadence. Which is stupid, because you end up with some of the dumbest cadences ever that people come up with off the top of their head. Like Pebbles and Bam Bam on a Friday night tried to get to heaven on a paper kite. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> what the f*** does this have to do with anything? And then you get other people that are super, super motivated to do dumbass cadences about airborne rangers. And I'm like, we're in a support unit. Not a single one of us is, air- is an airborne ranger. None of us will be airborne rangers. Stop <laughs> with the cadence. It's stupid. C-130 rolling down the strip. Airborne rangers on a one-way trip. None of us are airborne rangers. None of us are ever going to do dangerous missions like that. I swear to God, next person to do a cadence like that, I'm going to put you on a C-130, and then I'm going to... Oh, Jesus. So what's the most bored you've ever been? I know it's asking you to search your entire military career and try and find especially boring... Yeah. Why don't you go first? <laughs> you, go, tell, you tell me what's the most bored you've ever been first. Man, I don't know. There was like... Uh, there was a time where we had nothing to do for like three days, so we just stacked plastic bottles and threw rocks at them for the entirety of those three days. And that was it. That, Dang. Was, that was all we did for like three days. That is pretty bored. But yeah, there was one night where we had uh, we were sitting out there and we took something similar to what you did, where we just took like a can, like an empty SpaghettiOs can, and put it on the curb. <laughs> and we were just pitching rocks at it to try and knock it over. It's pretty much all you can do when you got nothing to do. You just yeah. target practice. Yeah, just do that. And then we got yelled at for doing that. Yeah, well, that's because you're in the military and you get yelled at for everything. Yeah. And then people wondered why I smoked like seriously a pack and a half of <laughs> cigarettes a day. I used to have a grenade launcher. <laughs> You used to have. You didn't have any grenades for it, though, did you? No, I mean, like while I was in the military, I was issued a grenade launcher. You ever fire a grenade launcher? Yes, a lot. No, you haven't. Yes, I have a lot. How many grenades have you thrown? Hand grenades? Yeah, only like two, but forty millimeter grenades, a lot of them. Why would you, working in the armory and in closed space, be issued a grenade launcher? Because okay, so we got six new grenade launchers into our company, and they called me. And they said, hey, come down to the arms room and install these grenade launchers. I said, what M16s am I putting these grenade launchers on? And they said, pick six of them. And I went, seriously, any six? And they said, yeah, any six. And I went, okay, well, where's my weapon? Give me that. That is mine. I'm putting this grenade launcher on it. I have a grenade launcher now. Because I wanted a grenade launcher. You've actually fired a grenade launcher. I've fired a lot of grenades. We went on a convoy live fire mission. While you were deployed? No, no, no. Convoy live fire range. It was like a firing range. We rode in the back of trucks and shot at stuff with them. <laughs> and Veronica's still not doing well because you blew her up with the grenades. And <laughs> basically, we were only supposed to go on one, and they did six of them. I was only supposed to go on one. I volunteered to go on all six <laughs> because they had ordered too many practice grenades. <laughs> so I ended up firing a lot of 40 millimeter grenades. I used the grenade launcher so much, I didn't really even need to use a sight on it anymore. I would just be like, okay, well, I need to be at roughly this elevation to hit a target at 300 meters. <laughs> and then you'd hit the then you'd hit the target. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot about grenade launchers. <laughs> Learn something new every day. I can't believe I've never told you the story about grenade launchers. <laughs> You've got a lot of stories I haven't heard before. Yeah, I had an underbarrel M203 grenade launcher for like almost a year while I was in the military, and then they took it away from me because they said. <laughs> I'm not doing so well here. Then they took it away from me because they said, well, you're mostly going to be in a shop fixing weapons all the time. And I said, fine, I guess I don't get a grenade launcher anymore. So yeah, they took my grenade launcher away from me and then they gave me a belt-fed machine gun. (laughs) Which I didn't understand anymore because I was like, you just said I'm going to be like in a shop, so why would I need a grenade launcher? And then you gave me a fully automatic belt-fed machine gun. Are you fucking stupid? The answer to that question is yes, it's the military. They are. And as it turns out, they didn't really care that I had just put a grenade launcher on my rifle with, like, no authorization and it had never been to a firing range with a grenade launcher before. They didn't care because the majority of people who had put grenade launchers on their weapons were super pissed about it because it meant they had to carry more weight. <laughs> sounds, I didn't care. I wanted like... a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. <laughs> well, that is quite the story I had never heard before. Yeah. 
So I don't mean to bring up the conversation of poop again, but... No, but you're going to, yes. Yeah, you kind of reminded me of a story that happened to me when I was also... I was on a mission with some other Marines, mm -hmm. and we also had a port john and it was in the middle of nowhere, so it didn't get emptied. So very, very rapidly filled with fecal material and urine. Yes, to put it in a very gross way, that is true. And also probably MRE wrappers and crayons and glue, because that's all Marines eat. <laughs> yeah, and... Um, there wasn't enough toilet paper, so what they used was um, fiberglass cloth. What? Yeah, they had cloths that we normally use for cleaning up grease. We uh, had some of that. Oh, like not fiberglass, like a fiber cloth. No, it was a fiberglass cloth. It was a cloth that had fiberglass in it. Oh my god, that is the worst idea I think I've ever heard. And they were using it as toilet paper. That is the worst idea I've ever heard. The itching would be indescribable. It apparently didn't come to anyone's mind that maybe scratching your butt with something like that would be a bad idea. So yeah, that was a fun weekend. Please tell me you didn't use it. I will not tell you anything more about that weekend. Oh that my was a god, terrible weekend. you wiped your ass with fiberglass. <laughs> That's like wiping your ass with poison ivy and going, No, oh, this will be fine! <laughs> Man, I joined the military over a decade ago, and you you joined even earlier than that, yeah, so... Yeah, I joined 2004. Yeah, right out of high school. If we want to get real technical about it, I didn't actually join right out of high school. I had to wait six months. Because you weren't old enough? No, because they said, hey, we have enough small arms repairmen for this fiscal year, so you have to wait until next fiscal year. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, do you want to be a truck driver? You could join the military <laughs> right now. And I said, fuck you. <laughs> I drove a truck in the military. I drove Humvees and seven tons. Yeah, it wasn't your job, and you did it just as well as people whose job <laughs> it was. Yeah. Go figure. Well, my job in the military was... Basic Water Sanitation Engineer, but the old acronym for it was Hygiene Equipment Operator. Mm -hmm. So H-E-O. Mm -hmm. And there was one guy in our job training corps. He was a big burly guy. We called him Ox, but he was like 200 pounds of all muscle. Uh -huh. We were like, why did you join as a Hygiene Equipment Operator? I was supposed to be Heavy Equipment Operator, but my recruiter got the paperwork wrong. <laughs> oh my god. Well, let's go find Knight Aster and be like, not Knight Aster. Knight but, Aster? Sorry. You just promoted First Sergeant Aster to, oh, I guess I got a promotion, don't I recruit? There was a gunnery sergeant who was my drill instructor and he gave me a command and I, I was so exhausted. I just said, yes, meh. And I stopped short and he looked at me. You were going to say, yes, sir, right? You weren't going to say, yes, ma'am, were you? And I said, yes, master sergeant. Wait, what rank was he? He was gunnery sergeant, so what rank, <laughs> so what rank below master sergeant? He got a promotion. <laughs> oh, good, a promotion! Uh, in basic training, I named one of my weapons. What did you name your weapon? I named my M16 Piper. No, you didn't. I did, actually. I named my M16 Piper in basic training. That was like 10 years ago, before Fallout 4 came out. And it, oh yeah, because Piper has never been a name. Why did you decide to name your rifle Piper? Because everybody else was naming their rifles after their girlfriends or wives or whatever. And I didn't have either. So I was like, I'm going to name it Piper because I like that name. It's a nice name. It's just a name you liked. I like the name Piper. And then you spent every night with Piper. Yep. I named my rifle too. What'd you name it? I named her after the serial number so it was easy to remember. Good old 0309823. Zero Let me tell you a fun story about when Mike joined the military. I was mm -hmm. at my horrible base of Fort Polk, the asshole of the entire world. I was playing video games, and I get a call from a number I don't recognize. This guy on the line says, Hi, my name is Sergeant whatever. I'm with the United States Marine Corps. And he says, I have heard from Mike that you might be interested in joining the Marines. Uh, uh, okay. I didn't have the heart to tell him, No, I'm already in the military. So what I said is, No, I'm going to college. And he says... You know, if you join the Marines, they'll actually help pay for college. And I said, no, nah, it's okay. I got a trust fund. I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> you said that? Yeah. <laughs> After talking with him for about a good 10 minutes on the benefits of joining the Marines, while well, I'm actually already in the military, I finished talking to him. I called Mike and I said, Mike, why'd you tell him I was interested in joining the Marines? And you just started laughing. <laughs> You said you thought it was funny. That sounds like me, all right. <laughs> I was like, Mike, I told you how bad the military is. Why'd you join? 
Oh, was he contacting you because he was trying to verify that I was... No, he was contacting me because when you went to the recruiter station, you wrote down four people's names that might be interested in joining the military, and you wrote down my name, knowing full fucking well that I was already in the military. I, I actually put down four people's names, all of whom were in the military. Probably all of whom were already so he, in the military. So he couldn't harass civilians. 